Recall that stage C patients are symptomatic and have structural abnormalities of the heart. The treatment goals for patients are to reduce symptoms, decrease hospitalizations, and reduce mortality. Like stage B HFREF, management of stage C HFREF includes an ACE inhibitor or ARP and a heart failure specific beta blocker such as carvedilol, metoprolol, succinate, or bisoprolol. Stage C HFREF will also frequently require diuretics and aldosterone antagonists. Diuretics are used to relieve symptoms of volume overload. There are two types of diuretics, loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics that are commonly used. Loop diuretics should be started first. They cause the kidneys to excrete more sodium and water into the urine. Then fluid that has accumulated in the tissues is drawn back into the bloodstream. So congestive symptoms such as edema and dyspnea will improve. Loop diuretics include furosemide, torsemide, bumetanide, and ethacrinic acid. Oral furosemide is usually the first choice. Oral torsemide or bumetanide often work for patients who don't respond well to furosemide. Ethacrinic acid is expensive, so it's reserved for patients with an allergy to the other agents. Thiazide diuretics, such as hydrochlorothiazide, act similarly to loop diuretics, but on a different part of the kidney tubules. Thiazide diuretics also cause vasodilation, which lowers blood pressure. They're not as effective in patients with heart failure, so they should be used in conjunction with a loop diuretic. Only use thiazide diuretics after loop diuretic therapy has been maximized and only as needed because thiazide diuretics can cause severe electrolyte disturbances such as hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hyponatremia, and acetemia. There are a few things you need to know about the side effects of diuretics. Diuretics can cause hypotension. Patients can tolerate some asymptomatic hypotension. So you should keep increasing the diuretic dose in that case. Once the patient is clinically euvolemic, the diuretic dose should be adjusted to the minimum dose required to maintain euvolemia. Similar to ACE inhibitors, diuretics may cause a transient asymptomatic rise in creatinine. As I said before, keep treating the volume overload rather than treating the creatinine. Aldosterone antagonists such as spironolactone and aplerinone are approved for any symptomatic half raf patients with an ejection fraction of 35% or less. A glomerular filtration rate of at least 30 milliliters per minute and a potassium level of 5 millimoles per liter or lower. Aldosterone antagonists will block the hormone aldosterone which results in increased sodium and water excretion by the kidneys and lessening of congestive symptoms. The main concern with these medications is hyperkalemia. You need to monitor potassium levels and renal function three and seven days after starting medication, then monthly for three months and every three months after that. Always start with spironolactone because it's the less expensive option. Only switch to a plerinone if spironolactone causes gynecomastia. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.